Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Tim Travels. I'm your host, Terry. Hey, um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about treating your customers right and um, being honest and forthright. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you where I am and, and a little bit about the place I am. Um, so I'm right now I'm in Hubbard, Ohio at the um, at the Loves and if you know where Hubbard is it's like right almost as you get into Pennsylvania on Interstate 80. So um, in this area something that's always been kind of interesting to me is in Niles which is just like one exit back or two exits back west is where President William McKinley, um, the memorial for him is. And, you know, lots of people know that, you know, Lincoln was assassinated and Kennedy was assassinated. But those two guys are the bookends. There have been four presidents assassinated. Lincoln in 1865, then James A. Garfield in 1881, uh, William McKinley in 1901, and then John F. Kennedy in 1963. But the interesting thing is about McKinley is that he was a he was president. He was from Ohio, and he was a soldier during the Civil War. He started out as an enlisted guy, um, and you know, obviously, he became president. But one of the other people that was in his regiment, the 23rd Ohio, was his um, was Rutherford B. Hayes. So they were both in that regiment during the Civil War, and they fought in the Eastern Theater. Now, Hayes was elected in 1876, and that was the first election where somebody won the presidency without winning the popular vote. Hayes was a Republican. He was succeeded by a guy named James A. Garfield. Garfield, assassinated in 1881, was also an Ohioan and fought in the Civil War. Although Garfield um, fought in a different regiment than, than Hayes and McKinley, but in, and also in the Western Theater of the War. So think Shiloh, Chickamauga, that area, those types of battles. But I just found it interesting that the, the people that are probably the two men that are less remembered, um, having been assassinated as presidents 20 years apart, basically, um, were both from Ohio, both fought in the Civil War. And, you know, there, there's just a lot of connection there. So anyway, I just wanted to share that. Three presidents that were from Ohio, there have been other presidents from Ohio, but those three are kind of connected to each other in kind of odd ways, interesting ways. So anyway, um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience, a couple of recent experiences at, um, at Blue Beacon Truck Wash. But before I do that, I just want to... <laughs> I just want to share a little thing about honesty and integrity and and um, so there's a guy and I'm not going to show him but he's he's right next to me at the truck stop and, he, and he's one of those hot shot car haulers. So when I pulled up here I noticed there was a car parked next to his trailer and somebody was working on the rear, one of the rear axles or tires or whatever and so I was like oh he must have got some help from somebody local or something. But then I realized that this dude took one of the cars that he's hauling, because he has keys for all of them, right? And he's using it as his, like, local ride so he doesn't have to drive around. And the reason I know that is because that car has current license plates like the other cars on his trailer. But this is the back car of three. And, um... When I went to get a soda refill a little bit ago, I was almost to inside the truck stop. 
And um, if you've ever been to this truck stop, you know, like the farther, I, it, it's not like the parking isn't really around the building. It's like on one side and it just kind of keeps going. And I'm pretty far out. I always park out here for so I can take the dog for a walk. But um, as I'm almost there, this guy comes flying by in this red Camry, drives over the scale, pulls up into like a no parking area right by the door, by the diesel desk, gets out of the car, leaves it running, leaves the door open and goes inside and buys a tool and then jumps back in the car and he's now back here trying to fix his axle or tire. I'm guessing that the people that hired him to transport these vehicles don't really think that that's how their keys are going to be used or their vehicles are going to be driven around um, by the guy so he can get repairs made on the road. So I guess if you ever use one of those guys, make sure you take a picture of the odometer. Um, maybe also do a little due diligence make sure the guy has insurance stuff like that so on to blue beacon so my company gp transco has an account with blue beacon and we could take our trucks in there and get the basic truck wash which is the tractor not the trailer nothing else right if you want something else you got to pay for it so the first couple, three times I used it, I would just say I want the normal truck wash. Nothing special, just what my company will pay for. And so each time, you know, I would get out, go inside to the office there to give them the information they needed. And these guys would pop my hood and they'd start doing stuff. And I'm not really watching them. I mean, they're washing a truck, right? Like, you know... Hopefully they get most of the dirt, but I'm not really watching them. It's not like they're turning wrenches on my truck. So I just assumed because the engine, uh, this is a fairly new truck, but the engine always looked bright and shiny after they got done. You know, next time I check oil or check the belts or whatever. So I, I had just assumed that they, you know, would spray down the engine when they opened up the hood. Um, that's my assumption. So anyway, I go to a Blue Beacon in November. And actually, it's the Blue Beacon in Harbor Creek, Pennsylvania, which is on I-90 uh, right outside of Erie. And this was on November 11th. And I have the receipt here. And so I pull in, you know, and I had to wait like you most of the time. This was early on a Saturday morning. And I was headed to... Uh, Syracuse area. So I pull in, the guy says, like he meets me outside. He says, hey, do you want, you know, what do you want? I said, I want the basic truck wash that my company pays for. Oh, okay. Do you want the engine wash? I'm like, yeah, sure. Because I thought that that, that's why they always opened the hood. So I go inside, you know, I pull in, I go inside. Now, mind you, at Blue Beacon, there are no prices posted outside the building, like where they come to take your order. There's no, There are no prices posted. And when you pull in the bay, there are still no prices posted. So I get out. The guy, you know, does his thing and, you know, finally comes in to, to get my information. So I give him the information and then he tells me, that it's going to be an extra ten dollars for the engine wash, and actually it was ten sixty with tax. Now I said, "Well, wait a minute. Why didn't you tell me there was an upcharge for that? Because I asked for the basic truck wash that my company pays for. That's the language I used." And he was like, "Well, everybody knows," and I'm like, "No, everybody doesn't know." There's no price list. So then he must have hit like an alarm or something because then the manager comes in. And, you know, he's like, well, it's listed right here. I'm like, that price list that's behind the counter is not visible to anybody until they get in here to pay. And 
And he's like, well, everybody knows that. And I'm like, no, they don't. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be discussing this with you. And it just so happened that I had $20 on me. Now, a lot of times I don't have cash, but I just happen to have $20 on me. And so I paid them and I got the receipt, but I immediately called, because there's a phone number here on the bottom for the home office. I called the home office and I basically left a blast voicemail. And I, and I said, I think it's really crappy. I think it's unfair and it's kind of deceptive, not kind of, it is deceptive to try to upsell somebody, but not tell them at all that there's a charge for what you're trying to upsell them on, right? And, and there's no, there are no prices listed anywhere. Whereas, you know, I've gone to other car, wa car washes um, and the only truck washes I've ever been to are Blue Beacons. I've gone to car washes and, um, you know, they always have every price listed. This package, the gold, the bronze, the platinum, tells what you get, tells how much it costs, has a complete price list. Okay. Nothing like that at Blue Beacon. And... I just felt like I was I was ripped off in in part because candidly ten dollars and sixty cents to like hose off the engine when you're already making like dang near fifty bucks to wash the tractor seems excessive but it's but it's particularly irksome when they don't tell you up front so I'm sharing this story with you because at first, I thought, well, maybe it was an anomaly. And there's this guy named uh, Dan. Wait. His last name is Matthews, but it, his first name might be Dan. But anyway, he called me from the company. But I've played phone tag with him, and I've called him back at least twice where he hasn't returned my call. So that's kind of like, I've been waiting a little while to get some explanation, some satisfaction. And again, it's not about the 10 bucks, it's about the principle. You don't wanna get, you don't wanna feel like you've been ripped off, right? If I wanted the engine washed and they said, oh, well that'll be an extra 10 bucks that you'll, you know, your company probably won't pay for, I could have made a decision at that point. I could have said, yeah, you know what? I like having a clean engine so I can see if there are any leaks. Right. I also, you know, if I got to put my hands on something, I'd prefer that it be sort of clean. That way, I, you know, I don't drag grease and dirt into my cab. So, you know, that was that was the whole point of, you know, why I was upset. So anyway, I said, well, maybe that was an anomaly. This Matthews guy never got back with me. Um he did return some calls, but like he hasn't been very, you know, super proactive about it. I'll put it that way. Oh yeah. Guy's putting the car back on the uh, trailer now. He must be done with his repairs. Um, anyway, so I, the other day I was out in Denver and it was really nice, sunny fifties. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go get my truck washed. I kind of had been boycotting, um, blue beacon, but I was like, the truck needs to get washed. It's just dirty. I, you know, it's, it's just dirty, really dirty. So I went to Blue Beacon and I, and I went up and I said, I want, the guy came out, he's got his little card with the, you know, regular wash or the super duper, you know, paint sealant wash or whatever. No prices on it though. Again, no prices posted outside, no prices in the wash bay. He says, uh, which one do you want? I'm like, the regular wash that my company will pay for. And then he says, so I know that this is not something that was just going on at the Pennsylvania, um, the uh, Harbor Creek, Pennsylvania facility. And by the way, these are not franchised. They don't, Blue Beacons is not franchised. These are all company owned. So at the Commerce City one, that's right by the TA, Guy says, I said, I only want 
what my company will pay for, the basic tractor wash, the basic truck wash. Then he says, after I just said that, he says to me, do you want the engine washed? I said, why are you asking me if I want the engine washed, but not telling me that you're going to charge me for it? And he goes, well, the, I, I said, there's no price list out here. You're not giving me any information. You're trying to upsell me without me even knowing that there's going to be an upcharge. He's like, well, it's posted inside. But guaranteed, even before I got out of the truck, once I pulled in there, they were going to have my hood popped and be hosing it down. And the first thing out of their mouth was going to be, oh, well, you, you said you wanted it, so now pay. I don't like being deceived, and I bet you don't either. We're, we're blue-collar workers. Some of us are, are tight financially. Um, if people are out there that are like my family, my wife had two jobs that she lost because of coronavirus. And she's now just gone through a process to get another job um, that she can that she can do and, and still manage our home while you know while I'm on the road. But I don't appreciate getting ripped off by a company like Blue Beacon. I don't appreciate being taken advantage of. And I'm guessing that there's a lot of people that this has happened to. And I called my company, I talked to our driver relations um, person and I told her what happened. Now my company is in the process of getting um, its own truck wash. Um, lots of companies have them. When I was at night, they had truck washes at some terminals. And then they also used detail guys that came to the terminal. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to tell anybody not to go to Blue Beacon. Obviously, a lot of us, you know, run reef or I don't, but a lot of people do. And you got to get you got to get the trailers washed out. So you, your choices are limited, especially if the, there's a corporate account there. But just beware of this practice and what they're up to. Um, they're trying to upsell people on stuff without disclosing up front what the price is. And to me, that's, a, that's an unethical business practice and it's deceptive. And um, if that's happened to you, I'd love to hear about it because I'm considering filing a, a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission because these guys are all over the country and it's happened to me once where I had to come out of pocket but it's happened twice different parts of the country different I'm sure different district managers this upselling trickery is coming from their corporate office out in Oklahoma I I or excuse me maybe it's Kansas yes yeah, Salina Kansas I guarantee that this is something that that they have pushed their local people to do um, and it and it kind of stinks so if this has happened to you um, I'd love to hear about it and if you would share this video with other truckers that you know lots of us ha have to use blue big and some of us want to use it because we'd like to have our truck clean once in a while um, but this is, to me, it's just not cool what they're doing. So anyway, stay safe out there. Um, man, watch out for the cold out in the Midwest. That is some deadly stuff that's coming. Do not, do not get outside without some really warm clothing. And that, and when it's super, super cold like that, below zero, it will sneak up on you very, very fast. So anyway, um, Take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time.